Welcome to Statics. Analysis of Machines The focus of this lesson is on machines. However, the principles and methods of analysis for machines apply directly to frames. While frames are typically composed mostly or entirely of slender linear members, machine members can be most any shape. We will analyze machines by using multiple free body diagrams. A key strategy will be to identify two-force members, since this will reduce the overall number of unknowns in our problem. Then we will sketch free body diagrams of groups of members or individual multi-force members. For each diagram, we will consider which unknowns could be found by applying equilibrium equations, including summing moments at various points. We will transfer equal and opposite forces between connection points. Let's look at some strategies for analyzing machines. Here are some vice grips. I want to find the clamping force on the bolt and the reaction forces on pins A, B, C, and D. I first look for two force members. We have one, member CD. The other three members are multi-force members. I am going to construct free body diagrams for each of them. Free body diagram one is the top member. Since CD is a two-force member, I show the reaction at D as a single force acting in the direction from C to D. The contact on the bolt is shown as a normal force pushing on the grip. The pin at A has X and Y direction reaction forces. Altogether, there is a single known applied force and four unknown forces. Free body diagram 2 is the bottom left member. The contact on the bolt is again shown as a normal force pushing on the grip. The two pins each have X and Y direction reaction forces. Note that I can choose the direction of AX and AY in free body diagram 1, but in free body diagram 2 I must show them as equal and opposite. Altogether, there are no known forces on this free body diagram but five unknown forces. Free body diagram three is the bottom right member. The directions of all the unknown forces are dictated by the other two diagrams. There is one known applied force and three unknown forces. I will now look more closely at free body diagram three. There is good reason to go here next. It has a known force applied and the fewest number of unknowns. I cannot get any unknown forces directly by summing forces, but if I sum moments at point B, I can find force CD directly. Once I solve for force CD, I can get BX and BY by summing forces to zero. So a good strategy is, when possible, start with a free body diagram that has at least one known force and the fewest unknowns. Next, I move to free body diagram 1. A good reason to go here next is that it has the fewest unknowns of the remaining members. If I started here and tried to take moments about point A, I would have two unknowns in my equation, the normal force and force CD. However, since I know force CD from analyzing free body diagram 3, summing moments at A will give me the normal force directly. Then I could get AX and AY by summing forces to zero. So, a good strategy is to carry over known pin reactions to the next free body diagram with the fewest unknowns. So, one overall strategy for solving for all our unknowns is to start with free body diagram 3, because I can solve for all the unknowns by summing moments at B, summing forces X, and summing forces Y. Then I move to free body diagram 1, and transfer the shared force FCD over from free body diagram 3. Then I can get the remaining unknowns by summing moments at A, summing forces in the X direction, and summing forces in the Y direction. Then we have all our unknowns without even using free body diagram 2. Let's look for a minute at free body diagram 2. I could sum moments at point A, but there will be three unknowns in my equation. I could sum moments about point B, and there will again be three unknowns. However, there are ways to solve this problem by using free body diagram 3 and free body diagram 2 together. 
One way is to write two equations with two unknowns and solve them simultaneously. So note that sometimes you cannot solve directly for all forces, and simultaneous equations are required. Let's look at this alternative option. As before, we begin with free body diagram 3 to get force CD, BX, and BY. Then we go to free body diagram 2 and transfer over BX and BY as equal and opposite forces. Then by summing forces in the X direction, we get AX. If I sum moments at point B, I get an equation with AY and N. If I sum forces in the Y direction, I will get another equation with AY and N. I can then solve the two equations simultaneously. Note that there is another way to get AY and N directly from free body diagram 2. Sometimes we will only be analyzing a portion of a machine, such as the bucket mechanism of this front end loader. Only the part of the machine we are to analyze is shown, and most of the rest is neglected, except for this portion of the component to which the mechanism is connected. Sometimes the machine we are analyzing is connected to a support, such as this clamping mechanism. You should treat these supports as fixed supports. Don't bother trying to draw free body diagrams and analyze the forces on the supports. There will be too many unknowns to be useful for solving for the other forces on the machine. Here's another example of a machine that controls movement of a bucket with a hydraulic ram. Suppose we want to find the reaction forces on the pins at A, B, C, and D. I begin by drawing free body diagram 1 of the bucket. There is one known force and four unknown forces, so more than we can solve with three equilibrium equations. However, because of the vertical alignment of the pins at A and B, we can solve for reaction AX by summing moments about point B. I can sum forces to get BX, but I cannot get AY or BY. So, I will move on to free body diagram 2. I transfer over AX as an equal and opposite force. Then I can sum forces to zero in the X direction to get force FC in that two force member, sum moments to zero about A to get the force DE in that two force member, and sum forces to zero in the Y direction to get force AY. Now I can transfer AY back to free body diagram one and some forces in the y direction to get force by. So, you don't always need to find all the unknowns on a free body diagram before moving on to the next free body diagram. In this example, we have the bucket controlling mechanism of a front end loader. Suppose we want to find the forces in the hydraulic rams AB and EF. Before I go and divide this machine into a bunch of free body diagrams, by inspection, I can find that if I group all the mechanism pieces as a single free body diagram, disconnected from the supports at G and F, I can solve directly for the force in RAM EF, which is a two-force member, by summing moments to zero about point G. I can then get forces GY and GX by summing forces to zero. So, another strategy is to look for forces that can be found by grouping multiple members into a single free body diagram. This is essentially what we did with the method of sections technique for analyzing trusses. Now, since hydraulic ram AB is internal to the mechanism and not connected to a fixed support, I will need to break the mechanism into multiple free body diagrams and analyze them to find it. Note that in this example, members AB, AC, and AD are all two force members. If I can find the force in one of the members, then I can analyze joint A as the joint in a truss. So groups of two force members can be evaluated using the method of joints. Here is a summary of the strategies discussed in this video. Not all of the strategies will apply to every problem. The goal is to be familiar with these strategies and look for how you can apply them in the various machine problems you encounter.